Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel. Today, let's dive into how plastic is made. The reason I wanna talk about this is because so many people don't understand how plastic is made. I mean, even me, for example, before I went zero waste, I, I had no idea what plastic was made of, how it was made, and kind of why recycling is so bad, and also why plastic is still such a big issue if we know it's a problem, if that makes sense. Because what I mean is, we know plastic is polluting the earth, we know it is in the stomachs of animals, we know it's in our drinking water, why do we keep producing it? Um, so we're gonna get into that at the end of the video. I hope you're excited for this. This is a, it's a bit of a different video, but I think you're gonna enjoy it and learn a lot. Last thing before we jump in, if you prefer to read along, I'll leave the blog post version to this video linked down below. Before we jump into things, I just wanna say a big thank you. We are almost to 10,000 subscribers as I'm filming this. Absolutely mind blowing to me. So a huge thank you. Once we hit 10,000, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway probably hosted on Instagram, so go follow me there if you're interested. And if you're not subscribed yet, but you enjoy my content, I would really appreciate if you hit the subscribe button. And that way you get actually notified when I post new videos. I talk about all sorts of things, zero waste, focusing on free, easy, and fun ways to live low waste, practical activism, and education. Kind of a lot, all tied into zero waste. And the last thing, I also have a travel channel. Um, not necessarily travel, but just like adventures. My husband and I, Dan, we go on hikes, we do outdoor rec stuff. We post all that on our adventure channel, which is always linked in the description. Now let's get into it. Let's first talk about how plastic is made. Yes, plastic can technically be made of plants. That's called bioplastics. I have a full video on bioplastics. I'll leave it linked above. But traditionally, plastic is made of oil. That's right, we are extracting oil from the ground. And instead of putting that valuable stuff into our cars, we're turning it into plastic that we use for a few seconds and then it gets thrown into the landfill or the ocean, not really recycled. <laughs> but if you'd like to learn more about the full life cycle of plastic and how it's made, I really encourage you to check out the story of plastic. Um, and then they have, they have a short video, I'll leave a link down below, or you can sign up through their website for a free screening. But this is basically the surface information. The oil is first extracted from the ground using oil rigs and sent to processing facilities. The oil is then refined into ethane or propane, which are then treated with high heat in order to be converted into monomers like ethylene and propylene. After the monomers are made, they are combined with a catalyst to create a powder-like substance. This powder is then melted down and fed into a pipe to create long plastic tubes after it cools. These tubes are then cut into pellets, which is what companies buy to turn into water bottles, auto parts, or whatever else is made of plastic. If you're a language nerd like me, fun fact, I have a degree, not in environmental science, in linguistics. So I really want to know the etymology behind plastic. It comes from the Greek word plastikos, and this means to grow or form. And it was first used as an adjective meaning formative, but now we use it as a noun. So when was the first bit of plastic ever invented and why did they even create it in the first place? <laughs> Put your guesses down below. When do you think plastic was invented? Personally, now that you've got your guesses in, I thought it was like early 1900s, maybe even mid 1900s. No, one of the earliest examples of plastic is from 1855, almost two centuries ago, which just blows my mind. This type of plastic is what we know today as celluloid, and it was created by Alexander Parks. And then PVC was first polymerized sometime between 1838 and 1872. But the first really big breakthrough in the plastic industry was in 1907. So if you guess around the time frame that I guess you're, you're technically right, um, that's when the first like boom started. This invention in 1907 was by scientist Leo Backlund, and this invention really paved the way for other plastics to be made. But why is plastic so popular now? We had lived as humans for centuries without this invention. Why in only 100 years did it blow up in this scale? Something else, I learned so much researching for this video. I thought, you know, plastic really wasn't booming until like the 50s and 60s when like malls became popular and like catalogs became popular when you had to, people were ordering more stuff. But actually, it was after World War II. Granted, that is after World War II, but you get what I mean. The war showed that nylon is a very durable fabric. Plexiglass proved that this is a lighter, more durable version for glass and aircraft and plastic helped food to preserve longer during this time. So during the war, plastic production increased 300%. And then of course, this was also after the Great Depression when Americans were ready to live lavishly again. So a couple decades passed and then the 60s and 70s roll around and that plastic production became what we see today, plastic everywhere. At first it was seen as a glorious invention and honestly, I can't really blame them. It made hospitals cleaner, it allowed goods to be stored in pantries longer, clothes became cheaper and more accessible, and it wasn't until later that we started to see the consequences. So you know, right around that time during the, the first big plastic boom, it's hard to see the consequences. But now, you know, 50 years later, we're really seeing how bad plastic is for the environment and for our own health. If we know it's bad, why is plastic still so popular? I'm sure we all know how bad plastic is. It's hard to recycle. Even if it can be recycled, it's really just downcycled. So it's pretty useless. 
it is not profitable. Therefore, companies don't want to recycle plastic in the first place. And then when it gets released into nature, like as litter or accidentally dumped into the ocean, it never breaks down fully. And then it ends up in the stomachs of whales, of land animals that we eat, of fish that we eat, it's in our drinking water. It's bad. But here's the thing. Plastic is still essential in a lot of ways. My camera's made out of plastic. My iPad that I'm reading my script off of has plastic in it. My light, my chair, my stool, like I, my, my shirt is probably made of plastic. It is, it's so hard to avoid, but it's also very essential. In other ways as well, disabled people need straws to drink out of. People need inhalers. People need like gloves in, in like the medical field. And I'm sure we can all name at least one food that we still buy in plastic. It's cheap to make, it doesn't break, and it's accessible. So of course the goal is to reduce our individual consumption when we can. And then companies need to replace it where they can in manufacturing, and maybe even just replace them with bioplastics entirely in the future. Now, does big oil have something to do with this about why it's still so popular? These are just my own thoughts, my own speculation, but I personally think big oil has a lot to do with our reliance on plastic still. I think also a lot of it is inherent to like American laziness. People don't want to wash dishes, so they use plastic plates and cups so they can just throw them away. It's a lot easier to buy a pre-diced watermelon in plastic than it is a naked watermelon. And it's, it's probably a few things, but I think big oil still has something to do with it. Maybe I just hate them. Maybe I'm just biased. <laughs> what I mean is that electric cars are on the rise as well as ethanol and other biofuels. Bioplastics too are becoming more and more popular. So with that, big oil of course wants to keep making money. What business doesn't? So they keep making plastic and they keep pushing plastic on us. If you didn't know, plastic recycling is basically useless. I have a few videos on plastic recycling. I'll leave them linked above and below. And there are clear benefits to recycling, like we talked about in a recent video about why recycling is so important, but not so much with plastic recycling, unfortunately. Plastic is still cheaper to make brand new than it is to recycle. It's still cheaper to extract brand new oil from the ground, turn it into a new product, than it is to take this water bottle and turn it into a new water bottle. <laughs> so producing virgin plastic is how big oil makes their money. This is, this is again, speculation, but I think they probably have, you know, their foot in the door of certain companies, politicians. Um, it's called lobbying, that's what it's called. <laughs> They're probably lobbying to keep the price of new plastic low and keep the price of recycled plastic high. That's just my personal guess. There's also this really great article written by Drilled News, I'll leave it linked below. And this talks about how oil companies also keep the demand for like gasoline as well. For example, during peak production of gasoline and oil in the 70s, the public wasn't using that much oil during that time. Not to mention oil supplies were far greater than the demand as well. So big oil found a way to make more money by lowering oil prices to incentivize more consumption. And they're finding a way to do that again. Only this time it's by turning more oil into more plastic. They're also making the process of creating plastic more efficient and cheaper for them so they make even more money. They're literally building like pipes from the fracking sites that go directly to the facilities. It's, it's insane. So what now? If you're not new to this channel and you normally watch all the way to the end, you know that I like to give my viewers an action step. Like, what do we do now that Lake Mead's running out of water? But today, this is mostly just educational. I don't really have many what now steps. You know, of course, it's always important to reduce your own consumption where you can, support plastic recycling where you can, and write to your businesses. Tell them, hey, you use too much plastic. It would be really cool to see you use bioplastics or recycled plastic. Write to your government, telling them that they should quit advocating for big oil. And divest as well from your banks. A lot of banks invest your money into fossil fuels, if you didn't know that. Um, I'll leave a really great video on that from Get a Mary, linked above and below. If you want me to dive into it in the future, I can. And if you want more ways to avoid oil as an individual, let me know. I actually already have that on my like brainstorming list. It probably won't be out till next year, which is crazy to say. I have a lot of like, you know, standard holiday content coming, but I've seen so many people on the internet recently being like, you drove a car to this rally about pipelines. How dare you criticize pipelines? Like, no, it's, it's okay to criticize a system that you have to partake in because it's the only system we can partake in. It's okay to use oil and still be angry that we're reliant on oil as a society. Once there's more options other than oil, we can switch those other options, but for now we can't. So if you want more ways to avoid oil, let me know. And of course, our small steps toward reducing our own plastic consumption might seem meaningless, but I'll give my standard example. If I personally use one water bottle every single day, 365 days a year, that's 365 water bottles I avoid as an individual and 365 water bottles that don't have to be created in the first place. So now say I inspire all 10,000 of you to also quit using one plastic water bottle a day 
for 365 days a year, that is three and a half million water bottles. So of course our small steps seem meaningless as an individual, but if you educate and inspire your fan friends and family to do the same thing, that's a lot more plastic we can avoid. So I hope that you take this and you learn something from it and now you're more inspired to quit using plastic. Maybe you even wanna share this video with your friends and family to inspire them to use less plastic, that would be cool. But also let's write to our elected officials to demand change and being, quit being so reliant on fossil fuels as a whole, like whether that's for our cars or for what we wrap our food in. Um, but I have a full video on tips for writing letters to your elected officials. I'll leave it linked above. But for now, let me know if you have any more questions on the topic. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. I hope that you learned something from this video. I certainly learned a lot just from scripting this video. Is this my last November video? I believe I, this is my last November video. I'm not looking at my content calendar right now, but some exciting things coming in December. Let's see, we got the 2021 gift guide. We also have my 2021 faves, which is gonna be like favorite brands I bought this year and then also my favorite thrifted finds. We got like a 2021 wrap up, a wrap up, I guess. Um, it's talking about like, did I meet any of my goals this year? What exciting thing happened for me and my brand? And then also some goals for 2022. Ew, that's kind of gross. <laughs> and then I have a very special video coming on Christmas day for you guys. A Christmas gift to you, if you will. A holiday present, if you don't celebrate. Uh, what else? Oh, I have it on my iPad. I have my content calendar right here. This is not my content calendar. And then coming in January, I have a lot of fun things planned too, like New Year's resolutions if you're trying to go zero waste for the new year. And then I have a lot of fun content planned for January as well. I can't believe we're almost to the end of this year. That's all that I have. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't made it all the way to this end of this video <laughs> and you have not hit the like button, well, I'd appreciate it. It really helps support my channel. If you like what you see here, hitting that like button helps get this video out to more people. So thank you for watching. And until next time, remember that your small actions have a big impact in the long run. Bye guys. If you're wondering why, I don't know, no. Oh, after the monomers are made, they are combined with a catalyst to create a power-like substance. It's supposed to be powder, okay. After the monomers are made, <laughs> I don't know how. Um, <laughs> the war showed that nylon is a very durable fabric, that plexiglass and plexiglass, oh my gosh. The war proved that nylon is a very durable fabric and that plexiglass, when I, I have it written down and I'm still messing up. Oh, that's really ugly. I need to get a cuter desk chair. I found it in the dumpster. I mean, hi mom. You're probably making fun of me for not being able to do math. I, I can't do math anymore because it's useless. Put this in the beginning. <laughs> Future me, put this in the beginning. Last thing before we jump in, if you would prefer to read along, I will leave the script. Last thing before we jump in, if you prefer to read along, I will leave the blog post. There's gonna be a full minute of bloops. Are you sleepy? Oh.